The Monopoly Collect and Win game is back at Safeway for your chance to win a million dollars cash, a vacation home, and instant prizes and offers. Find out more at Safeway. Shop this week with your club card and pick up delicious Hormel Cure 81 Spiral Sliced Ham for a tasty dinner, just one thirty-nine a pound. And stop by Produce for fresh strawberries. 16-ounce packages buy one, get one free. Safeway, it's just better. See game rules at playmonopoly.us. Monopoly is a trademark of Hasbro and is used with permission. Hi, I'm Stunning Stella Cheeks. And I'm the Enigma Erin Klein. And this is Not Not Your Your Demographic. Demographic, A feminist wrestling podcast. Shockingly, those exist. you i'm okay i just had i had five days off including the weekend it's a lot Um, yeah which was great and also like i'm really miserable right now because i really don't want to go back to work but it was really productive i did a lot around the house i did a lot of admin work for the podcast i wrote an article for cage side i had some freelance meetings i did like a lot of stuff and in my head i'm just like why can't this be my life i'm been i'm very productive i'm very busy why can't i just have more money for this stuff yeah yep so So we gotta start a patreon and make uh, people pay us for this you are like so into the patreon i know (laughs) Yeah, so I'm like a little bummed right now. So if I sound sad, that's why. Because I don't want to go back to work. That's all right. I understand. It sucks. That does suck. Five days off is, it's like right on that line of either too long or like that perfect amount depending on what you're doing. Right. Well, on Sunday I didn't do anything because I unexpectedly got really sick. Like I, I'm drinking a cider right now and it's like the first alcohol I've had like all five days. I was eating, like had a normal breakfast and then I just felt like really sick and then I just like got sick and was sick all day which sucks because me and Nick were gonna go on a Chili's date do you know how much I love Chili's dates oh. we go to Chili's and then we go see a movie and we were gonna go see the Power Rangers movie oh. I was so pissed that does suck I just had to be sick uh, well I'm glad you're better yeah at least it was only like a 24 hour bug I have no idea where it came from it was just like Ugh. it was it was gnarly Ugh, it wasn't gross. food poisoning either it was just like Thank sickness God. I mean we were in that um theater with all those people on uh, Friday night. Oh yeah, I guess there's a Plan 9 show on Friday. Yeah, that's probably where you picked it up. <laughs> but it was Sunday. That's like a hot, long time. Yeah. The Plan 9 show went well. I did an old number, one of like my original nerd less numbers, and yeah. it was probably the best time I've ever done it, so that felt really good. It was really, really good. And you were like worried about your costume beforehand too, and yet well, somehow it like... It is an old costume, <laughs> and I've gained a little weight, and I... it's. A spandex costume, so I felt like a little bit like a sausage. <laughs> uh, Incredible Hulk sausage. <laughs> um, I had to put tape. It did not look like a sausage, just so everyone knows. I had to put tape in a lot of strategic places. <laughs> it was a special experience. <laughs> it was good, though. It was a good show. Yeah, it was fun. It mm-hmm. was fun. Uh, how are you? Uh, I'm fine. I'm fine. I am not drinking for a month because oh, yes. I got so fucked up on the podcast last week. Sorry about that, everybody. That episode was so hard to edit. The like, I know <sighs> the quality of the sound sounds like shit, but trust me, it sounds like amazing compared to what I had to work with. I did yeah. some fucking like podcast sound witch. editing juju on that because <laughs> it was garbage. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, <laughs> so that is what I'm doing. Um, sober for a month? I'm sober for a month. Well, not sober, just oh, not just drinking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Definitely not sober, but do- not doing any alcohol. Um, yeah, I have class on Mondays now. In case everyone doesn't know that, please don't tweet at me about Raw, because <laughs> I have class on Mondays until June. But uh, I love my class. I love it so much. What is it? It's a... It, we have to do an externship for my program and you can do all kinds of shit. You can do like a uh, study abroad program as the externship. There's like a week long meditation seminar that you can take. You go out to Starved Rock and do stuff out there. Or you can do like a ILP thing or like an independent learning project online, or you can take a class and 
because of the time that I signed up for my classes, all that was left was the Monday night class. And I just took it because I was like, I have to do this. This is like one of my last things I have to do to graduate. And I didn't even look at the theme of the class. I was like, I have to take it. It doesn't fucking matter. (laughs) Cross my fingers. Hope it's good. And I love it. It's about the process of learning creatively and what creative process means. And it's most of the people taking it are not creative and they're taking it as like a, um, to like challenge themselves as their like last class. And I was like, I took this on accident. So I'm glad I already know what's going on here. (laughs) That's (laughs) funny. Yeah. It's been really cool. We watched uh, art school confidential on Monday, which is, that awesome. movie is so weird. I fucking loved it. I loved every moment. Have you never seen it. it before? No, I'd never oh, okay. seen it. I loved it. I thought it was so good. I love the line where John Malkovich is like, you should just give up. Everybody should just give up. Like, you're not going to make any money at this. Only one in a hundred of you will ever get your work recognized. Like, you should probably just give up on this. Because that is the same speech Leela Ivy gave us the first day of our auditions class at LCC. She was like, literally, just give up. I don't know why you're doing this. Like, just go. <laughs> if you're going to do it, just go and do it. And I was like, well, I'll be the one. We'll All of us were like, we'll be the ones that well, make yeah. it. Well, when you're in theater school, you're like, I'm practicing my uh, my interview with James Lipton every night. Yeah, exactly. And so I thought that the Art School Confidential was like a really great satirical look at what that's like. Some of it was just like too true. I was like, oh God, I relate so deeply to these (laughs) fucked up, flawed human beings. I loved it. I thought it was great. And it was interesting to like discuss it with a bunch of like HR majors and nurses who were like, I don't get it. (laughs) I don't get it. And you're like, I get it too much. Exactly. And they thought I was hilarious. They were like, you clearly went to theater school. And I was like, yeah, I did. It's true. (laughs) So, you know, it's a, it's been a, it's been a week. Things are going all right. What wrestling shirt are you wearing? I am wearing my Larry Sweeney sweet and sour memorial shirt. Uh, I wore this because I wanted to talk about Larry for a second. Yesterday was the sixth anniversary of his death. Do you know Larry Sweeney? Yeah, we've talked about yeah. him on the podcast before. Yeah, we talked about him last year during the anniversary of his death. He, You're getting into Chikara, so you're going to see him wrestle. He was a big part of Chikara, so you're well, going to become... I, so how I'm doing Chikara is I've watched them old, a couple old things, but I'm committing to watching the beginning of season 15 up until now. Okay. So that's my focus, so I can just kind of be like caught up and like know enough Mm -hmm. and then once I'm caught up that way I will just like go back and cherry pick okay cool Larry Sweeney if you guys don't know and you don't know very much about him Larry Sweeney was a professional wrestler in the indie scene uh he is probably one of the greatest managers of all time he was a fucking heat machine he could talk he could dance he was like incredible he uh he wrestled and was good like I haven't seen all of his wrestling it's it's weird for me because I didn't know him as Larry Sweeney I knew him as Alex, Michael's friend who had killed himself yeah. long before I knew that he was a wrestler. And so I, he was a person that I knew this really sad thing about. And then once I got into wrestling and into independent wrestling, especially to see all these people who were like, he was the greatest who ever lived. It's so sad. So I just wanted to talk for a little bit about what happened with Larry. I don't know if a lot of people know this, but he he had bipolar disorder and he stopped taking his medication and went into a manic period and... People saw him who were his friends and didn't do anything because they were like, there's nothing we can do about this. And every single one of those people now, after after he killed himself, were like, I wish I had done something. Mm -hmm. I wish I had reached out. It would have been very easy for me to do that. It was just easier not to. And I feel like Larry is a great example of like, you just have to reach out to people. Like if people look like they're struggling, like you, you just have, like, even if they're like, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Like, you know, when someone's lying to you and you know, when someone is not being truthful about their mental health. So I think this is a good time of year to remember that like sometimes people need help. And if you need help, you should always ask for help. Like, right. It's embarrassing, but it's like, you have to, if it's, if you, if some, from the perspective of somebody who's like not going through it, like if you think it's hard or uncomfortable to be the one who reaches out, think about how much harder and how much more uncomfortable it is to be the person going through it. Right. And when no person, one is reaching out. To be the person going through it alone. Yeah. So like, I don't exactly. know, check your privilege. Yeah, exactly. And so it's, this is, this is just that time of year where it's like really palpable. And it's also very strange for me to have like, I just knew him as this person who did this really sad thing. And now to like know him as someone who had like completely untapped potential. Like he was Joey Ryan before Joey Ryan was Joey Ryan. He was like the head of comedy wrestling for a minute, but he's also just like incredible. And like, 
he, he did this really fucked up angle on Ring of Honor for a minute that was very rapey. And, but he was like a heel and he was supposed to be getting heat. And Michael told me this story about how afterwards he got off, uh, off stage and he was like, I know everyone hates me, but I hate me right now. And I'm so angry about this. And like, it's interesting to hear about him as a person and how he like evolved as a wrestler. And it's it, honestly, it's just tragic. Like it, it's super unfortunate what happened. It's like n- everyone fucked up. Like, there's nothing you can do about it now. So I think it's important to remember him around this time and to give money to suicide prevention hotlines. That's yeah. what I did I'm in in Larry's honor. I gave a donation yesterday. So, you know, consider doing that. If you want to give a little money, that's a good place to put it. To the Suicide Prevention Lifeline or into the um, American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Both of those are really good organizations. That sounds great. Okay. So, yeah. What, are, what wrestling shirt are you wearing? I'm not wearing a wrestling shirt. I'm wearing uh, Ask Me About My Feminist Agenda shirt. <laughs> But if you read comic <laughs> books, you'll know it as the shirt that Mockingbird wears on the very controversial cover. I'm looking um, at it right now. It's yes, right next to it's us. It's my, in my comic book rack. We are recording in a different room. Ooh. It's true. Hopefully it sounds better. <laughs> uh, but I did put a Brie Mode sticker on my computer. Oh, you did? So. That looks good. There's that. My and you computer. have a Brie Mode koozie. <laughs> yes. I like Brie Bella. It, I know. <laughs> She's about to pop. She's so pregnant. Yeah, um, I think on Talking Smack, Dan O'Brien said, like, two and a half weeks. But <laughs> this is a period where it's, like, literally any moment. Yeah, like, from any moment from now until, like, a month from now, yeah. it's going to come out. So, yay, good for her. I can't wait to see it. I wonder if it's going to be a cute baby or it's going to be a weird-looking baby. I mean, all babies are pretty weird-looking until, uh, like... Some babies are cute, some babies are not. I don't know. I, I will like, be the judge of this baby. I feel like... <laughs> You can't really know if a baby's cute until they start to look like a human baby and no longer like a weird raisin or a gummy bear. And that no. takes like two weeks. It takes at least two weeks yeah. for their skin to unwet. Like, Ew, that's, don't say unwet. But that's what it is. Don't say unwet. <laughs> it has to be like free of the lubrication of the vagina. Yeah, but two weeks is tell. not that long. We'll be able to tell soon. Enough. No, it's... It, two weeks is a big difference. It goes For from, a baby, yes. Yeah, that's what for, I'm saying. But not for like... People, we can, we'll know really quickly if it's not oh, cute. Oh, okay. I say, I see what you're saying. I, I was love judging say, First babies. photos, mm-mm, that, that thing is an alien. I am going to have a monster of a baby. <laughs> it's going to be enormous. No, it's going to be like hideous because I talk so much crap about babies. <laughs> I've just worked with a lot of them and people are always like, babies are cute, children are cute, but like some babies are ugly. Oh yeah, some babies are super and ugly. Some babies, babies suck. <laughs> Absolutely. And I am I am here to tell the hard truths about babies. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to convince me. I do not care for children. <laughs> so by, like, karma, I'm going to have, like, a really hideous baby, I feel like. You're going to have twins, and they're both going to be hideous. They're going to be monsters. They're going to be... One's going to be a monster, and one's going to be hideous. <laughs> I guess you can be a monster without being hideous. Yeah. I mean, like, a giant baby. It's going to be, like, a 15-pound baby, and then you'll have, like, an ugly baby. <laughs> But the fat one will be cute. I mean, maybe. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. So I have been watching a lot of, like, random wrestling. I watched WrestleMania 17, which was, you know, lots of people say that that's the best WrestleMania ever. And I, like, can't speak to that because I haven't seen every WrestleMania. But it was really, really good. Yeah. And it was really fun to watch. Um, it is weird to watch Benoit matches still. Yeah, it but, definitely like, is. You know, Kurt, the Kurt Angle Benoit match from WrestleMania 17 is great. Yeah, it is a really good match. They're it both is great. <laughs> yeah, it is also really weird. I started watching WrestleMania 24 randomly. It's weird to watch the like promo video, like the packages at the beginning where there's like just no women. Yeah, mm-hmm. the one for WrestleMania 24 is just like Ric Flair and John Cena and JBL and all these people, and you're like not even like a like glimpse of like a, a woman in the background going like I'm here, like none, <laughs> zero. Which is so ridiculous. Yeah, that's very strange. It's so nuts. And this year we had two women's championships on WrestleMania. Yeah. It's pretty incredible. And, like, they're shown in, like, video packages. Yeah. And they're on, like, promotions. <laughs> and, like, they exist in general. It's mm-hmm. not just, like, they have these matches. Yeah. Last year for WrestleMania 32. They were in the middle. They were in the middle. The three women were. And, like, that is unheard of. Yeah. Amazing. So, I Progress. mean, obviously there's, like, a lot to go. But even from, like, you know. I mean... WrestleMania 24 was from, like, the 2000s, which is, like, a long time ago, but also not that long ago. Yeah, exactly. So it's just, like, you know, we can complain, and, you know, it's always good to look for the future and be critical of things that you like, but 
at the end of the day, there has been a significant amount of progress made. Yes, so I would agree. <laughs> it's good to remember that. Yeah, I agree. I've also been watching Chikara. I watched the first ever Chikara show. How was that? Which is, um, it was, it was good. I mean, it was like a, in a very small room. It's mostly interesting to hear the commentary because the commentary is done like way after the fact. Yeah. So they've like released a video and it's like more of like a commentary on like the whole process and like this was our first show hmm. and stuff. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, and I I watched another one randomly. I think it's from like season three or something with like baby Icarus. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I thought it because there's so much and I do want to be caught up, especially by the time Chicago comes to Chicago this year. Yeah. So I thought going from the season that I know ends with Kimber winning the the grand right. championship belt, like I think that's a really good place to start. Yeah. So I'm starting with that. It is weird though because like I have. I have so much emotional attachment to, like, some of those wrestlers completely outside of Chicago. Like, yeah. I have a lot of feelings about Chuck Taylor outside yes. of Chicago. I have a lot of feelings about Eddie Kingston outside of Chicago. Yep. <laughs> and Elle talked to us about that before. She was like, I like Eddie Kingston. I was like, mm, well, not me. Not, not, <laughs> yeah. not even 1%. Yep. Because, like, of our experiences with AEW and how he's, like, a trash monster there. Yes, it's true. Uh, so it's it's definitely interesting. I know that lots of people don't like uh, one... DeMarco Francisco. I don't remember his full name. De Francisco. I kind of like him. I really like him. I liked him when we saw him live. Um, I I know, like, Courtney Rose doesn't care for him, and she's seen, like, all of Shikara. But, like, my initial reaction is, I like this guy. Yeah, that's how I felt, too. Only <laughs> I like this pitch, really like... slow, shitty, like, upper, like, yeah. class. Like, hmm, I wear, I wrestle in a bow tie. Yeah, I agree. I, like, I've only seen a couple of matches of him, but they were against other people I really liked, like Chuck Taylor and, like, Ashley Remington. Mm-hmm. So I feel like maybe that's part of it, is that it colors that I, like, I know these other people are good, and right. so I'm, like, more accepting of it. But I, I do kind of like him. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I like, I like him. I don't know. I, I'm over for him. I also like the, what they're called, the bat- Batiri? Batiri? They're, like, they're really short guys with a scary face paint. I don't think I know who that is. They, we saw them. They were part of the um, the final match. They were on the evil side. Oh, oh. But they have, like, the really scary face paint. Yes, But they're, like, guys. tiny. And yes. I like them a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're great. I forgot about those guys. Right? <laughs> I know I'm, like, butchering the names, and I don't know anything, but I'm just getting I don't know starting. anybody's name in Chicago. Right? Like, anybody's at all. I'm just getting started. Oh, and I also, like, I so far, having watched, like, just a couple things, I'm a really big fan of Mr. Touchdown. I know everyone is, but, like, he's hilarious. <laughs> right? Yeah, he's great. Yeah, fair. Just totally throwing fair. a football around? That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, because the 2015 one starts, and they do a joke about, like, deflated footballs and stuff, because, like, it was right around then. Around uh, deflate gate. Deflate gate. And he was like, why my football? <laughs> Yeah, so that was fun. I look forward to, I think, you know, it's only like eight bucks a month and it hooks up to my Roku, so like... That's not bad at all. I've just been watching it randomly. Mm-hmm. So that's, I'm I'm going to do those seasons of Shikara and then I'll probably get on the progress train and then I'll just kind of cherry pick between them when I don't feel like watching WWE. But I still want to watch wrestling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I also watched some of the ROH show from the WrestleMania weekend. I yeah. haven't watched it all just because like, you know... There's so much wrestling all the time. Yeah. But I did watch the specifically the Marty Skrull Adam Cole match mm-hmm. for the television title and ugh, it was so good. Yeah, I know I never really need to watch I mean, it. I like him I feel like I feel like everyone is, but like such a mark for Marty. He's like who's amazing. Not? I don't know anyone he's amazing who's like, on Twitter. that guy. He's amazing on commentary, he's amazing at promo, he's amazing in the ring, his character is amazing, his entrance is amazing, he's just amazing. And he's really hot, his merch is amazing, literally everything about him is amazing. I know, he's great. His um he's got like an upgraded costume for uh I don't remember what it's called. Super I think it was called Supercard. Uh he's got an upgraded like entrance and costume and he looks super dope. Mm. Awesome. Yeah. He's the best. He is the best. He's the best. Oh, I guess we could talk about news. Oh, yeah. I we just news. jumped into Shakara. <laughs> That's all right. You know, I just want to talk about it. <laughs> Pre news. Uh, Renee and Dean got hit. Yay! Secretly. I loved how Kevin was like, Congratulations. And she looked at him. He was like, What are we not talking about this? I'm talking smack because he goes, Because I'm talking about it. And she was like, You were congratulating you. <laughs> I thought that was funny. It sucks that they just got married and now they're split up. They did not just get married. They got oh. married in October. Good for fucking them. Well, I think that's why they're wearing their rings is because they've been split up. And which like, fuck you guys. Yeah, it's kind of what it feels like. Um, I was talking to a couple of people about it on Twitter today about how WWE gets petty about that shit. It's possible that 
WWE found out and was like, fuck, you guys were getting married and tried to split Who them up. Who cares? WWE, Vince. Vince fucking cares. But why? Because he's an idiot. <laughs> he doesn't understand why people are attracted to each other. Did you know that he actively, that the reason, okay, so when Rusev and Lana were split up because she announced their engagement, the reason Vince put her with Ziggler is because he was trying to get her to cheat on Rusev with Ziggler and leave him for Ziggler. Because yeah, if he believes that that would happen. If your type is Rusev, you're not going to cheat right on Rusev with Dolph Ziggler. Because Vince does not understand why she's attracted to him. And she's like, and so he's like, it must, you just need something else. You need something better. Like he does, he literally doesn't understand it. Like, yes, please leave your immigrant husband who is beautiful and looks very different for this piece of shit, inferior looking conservative. Yeah, that's a great idea. Totally makes sense. Like, Vince, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> it blew my mind. So that, like, learning that too, I was like, I would be unsurprised if he was like, no, break him up. He needs to be accessible to women. Like, fuck you. You can be married and accessible to women as yeah. like a character. <sighs> and, like, I understand that the WWE Stan universe is fucking nuts. Yeah. But that, like... Oh, I forgot to talk about this. Talking about, like, nuts fans. Uh, AJ Lee, AJ... Oh, Brooks. yeah, that's right. You she met her. had a book signing at Barnes & Noble, like, downtown Chicago or whatever. And I had the day off, so I was like, oh, I'm going to go down there. First of all, I got dressed really cute. Mm -hmm. No big deal. It was but a good outfit. AJ Lee, when I walked up to her, she was like, oh, my God, you look great. And I was like, thank you so much. <laughs> so just for the record, Jessica Havoc has complimented my nails. Heidi Lovelace has told me that she likes my style. And AJ Lee has told me that she really liked the way I dress. So... <laughs> Kind of three for three here. I like how you're picking up occurrences of female wrestlers telling you how great you look, and I'm picking up occurrences of awkward bullshit with male wrestlers, like almost yeah. evenly. <laughs> yeah. So I'm really into that. Excellent. And it was really funny. I tweeted at the Barnes & Noble staff because their staff was like really, really excellent. And I just tweeted at them like, thank you so much. You guys were great. Whatever. And they tweeted back. They were like, oh, I'm so glad you had a, you had a good time. And then they tweeted back again. By the way, we're still talking about how good you looked. <laughs> And I was like, thank you, Barnes & Noble. Awesome. <laughs> Which is very funny to me. Um, Crush it. I've also never worn my AJ Lee shirt before because it's so uncomfortable. I only bought it because I was like, she's leaving and I need to get some of her merch. Yeah. But it's back when WWE didn't know how to make no, women's merch. Garbage. I never wear my AJ Lee shirt. Ever. I don't even wear it to bed. Yeah, but, like, I don't either. It's I had to do some like master craftsmanship to make it look good. <laughs> so like... That, I'm, like, so getting the compliment, but also knowing that that shirt is, like, garbage, <laughs> I feel very accomplished as a human. Excellent. But I was really expecting, because WWE fans are nuts. Yeah. Uh, but everyone was great. That's good. Like, I think I heard, like, one person, like, really, really cry. But, like, whatever, crying is fine. And there's all those pictures of AJ crying when she meets mm. her favorite wrestler. So, like, yeah. she gets it. I was, uh, I was near the end of the line just because I was like, well, whatever. I'm not going to get there early to stand in line. Yeah. And I was, like, complaining a little bit. Like, damn, this line is moving really slow. But then as I got closer, I realized part of the reason it was moving slow is because she was taking, like, a moment with each fan and, like, talking mm -hmm. to them. Specifically because her book is about mental illness and, like, overcoming that. There's a lot of people who are like, you know, I have bipolar disorder. I have this. And she was, like, really taking a moment with each of them. Which and like got a picture with everyone. She was she was really awesome. That's great. CM Punk obviously like blew up her spot. Yeah. Near the beginning, he like hid in line and then line cut and then was like, "Hi, I'm your biggest fan." And like she thought it was really cute. And I like I guess it's really cute. And it would be kind of shitty, I guess, if he didn't come out to her book signing since it's in Chicago. But it was just a little like, <sighs> okay. yeah, <laughs> hard eye roll. <sighs> but it was cute. But it was also like. I don't know. I have mixed feelings about the experience. I was also standing in line with two people uh, who, like, ended up being really cool. So it was, like, nice. I could just, like, chat with them. Yeah, that's good. And I talked about AEW a bunch. I was like, you guys live in Chicago. You should go to AEW shows. <laughs> so, AEW, I will look for my royalty check in the mail. <laughs> but I was surprised at how, like, chill the fan base was. Yeah. So that was cool. That's good. What were we talking about? Stands. Yeah. Dean stands. Dean stands. Yes. Yes. I didn't look at their marriage certificate because I felt really gross and squicky looking at yeah. it. But why from, is that on the internet? Because stands looked for it and were like, last night, we're like, ring what? Congratulations to the internet and the public records. They got married in Reno, not in Vegas where they live. Probably for that exact reason, because people monitor the marriage certificates that happen in Vegas and like weirdos. Like Sasha kept her marriage secret for months too. Like yeah. it, it is 
Like, I don't understand how crazy these people must be. Like, I guess I do, but... Well, it's twofold. It seems like you get, like, backlash from the company you work for just for, like, living your life. And right. then also, like, they're you're famous, so there are crazy people around. Yeah, exactly. And, like, it's, you think that the company would want them to marry within, within the company. The company. Yeah. yeah, like, Sasha's married to one of their, like, head costume designers. Renee and Dean are, like, staple parts. Also, they talk about the relationship on, like, Talking Smack and stuff. Like, yeah, and they talk about it on Total Divas. Like, they're cast members. Like, is this gonna be on Total Divas? Do we get to I see that marriage? So. I would fucking love that. I bet it's super fucking fun. I'm happy for them. I'm super but happy sad for them because they're split up for the brand know, split. Right? That's stupid. I had somebody say to me today, uh, point out that because Renee doesn't do live events that it's possible that they'll get to see each other more than they would if she was also a wrestler. Oh, that's true. So I guess that that like, is unfortunate, but I mean, whatever. It could be much worse. Uh, in injury news, Shibata gave himself like a brain hemorrhage. Yeah, basically. <laughs> he and Okada apparently had an incredible match. I have not watched it yet. And now I feel very hesitant to watch it, yeah. knowing that he got this fucked up. Apparently he, like, fell and stumbled, like, three or four times on the way to the back and then fell down in the back and they had to take yeah. him to the hospital. And yeah. he had to have surgery. Like, I don't think I want to watch this. In uh. other concussion news, Finn has a concussion. Yeah, right? Fuck you, Jinder Mahal, you well, j- jackass. Happen. I don't know. I don't know. He hit him fucking hard as hell. Yeah, as soon as Finn popped up, I was like, does he for real have ring like burn on his yeah, face? Yeah, And then I was like, and then I watched a replay and I was like, oh, he got knocked out. Yeah, he, he got for sure knocked got knocked out. And it was weird because he got back up and like, at and first then, he seemed... Fi- like, he finished the match and then finished the, like, weird Bray Wyatt thing. Yeah. At least, like, it was an appropriate response to look dazed and confused during Bray yeah. Wyatt. <laughs> like, that's a happy accident, I guess. Yeah, that worked out super well. Also, it's amazing that Finn Balor can just, like, totally work when he's injured. This is the second time he's been injured at the beginning of a match and then, like... Balor is a boss. Still can get through it. Like, it's... I'm I'm going to a um, WWE li- a Raw live event on Saturday with my friend Sarah um, in Champaign. And Champagne for everyone. We were both so excited that Finn was back, and Aww. now he can't wrestle. Oh, <laughs> so we're hoping he's so at least sad. there. That would be nice. Yeah. So, but we get Matt Hardy, which I'm very excited That's about. Exciting. I've seen Matt Hardy. I've never seen Jeff Hardy before, so I'm excited to see Jeff as well. Yeah, that'll be really fun. I love all the stuff that Matt Hardy's doing on Twitter where he's like, yeah. he's continuing the broken gimmick online so that if and when he can bring it back out, mm-hmm. it'll be relevant. It'll and people are sense. still eating eating it up. Like, eating it up. Everyone's excited to see Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy, period. Yeah. He's still wa- making the weird faces. It's yeah. not like... <laughs> and if you ever get sad, just watch that five-minute video of him making faces. So there was this saddest tweet. So NX- WWE NXT or whatever tweeted like, Drew McIntyre, back in the ring tonight, whatever, and then Matt Hardy quote tweeted it and said, my longtime rival, blah, blah, blah. And then a reply to that tweet is just eat C3 with, like, a sad face. And I was like, oh, the saddest, like, 30 seconds on Twitter that I've seen in a while. Oh. Rest, like, wrestling related or whatever. Ooh, wow. <laughs> Poor EC3. Come yeah. back. Just come back. You can be EC3 here. Yeah, right? It's fine. Um, It looks like Paige is going, is on the mend. And she yeah. should be able to make a return in the summer. Whether that means she's returning in WWE or returning on the independents. It's clear that Paige still wants to wrestle. It's yeah. just like unclear as to how or what. Yeah. It's, but uh, it is good that she's on the mend. Yeah, that's true. And I feel like even if, if they might just summer ray her, they might just keep her under contract and just no. have her do like live shows and do nothing else. No. <laughs> that would suck, but... I, mean, I want Summer Rae and Paige back. I know. I want Summer Rae to come back on SmackDown so she can be with Brizongo. <laughs> She's Alicia Faxer. Yeah, sure. Why not? They're not I using her for Faxer shit else. Yeah. <laughs> um, in two icky stories, uh, there was reports from Lana that she got uh, like assaulted by a TSA agent in Boston. Uh, not a lot of details are out, which is like probably good, but she did tweet that she had help from the police, so hopefully That's all good. of that is good and... You know, that sucks. I mean, it must be hard, A, to travel that much, but also to be, like, a very beautiful woman sometimes in, like, Mm -hmm. those shitty situations where people have, like, a lot of faux authority. Yes. And can really take advantage of it. So I I hope that everything works out and that she is okay. 
um, because that's really fucked up. Yeah, that is really fucked up. And then there's, uh, it looks like Mauro Ranallo is not coming back to WWE. Yeah, it looks like that is done. And that uh, lots of people have come out about JBL being a big piece of shit. Yeah, big piece of shit. It's weird. I'd like heard rumors of him being a bully. It's weird because I like, I have very mixed feelings about the, uh, the like ribbing culture of wrestling. Yeah. Like, personally, I hate pranks. I fucking hate them. I don't. I do not enjoy them. I think they make me deeply, deeply uncomfortable. You're not into swerved? No. Fucking hate it. I hate it. It's funny because Michael loves pranks. And when we first started dating, I was like, let me make this very clear to you. If you ever prank me, I will will immediately dump you. And that will be the end of our relationship. And he's like, okay, I believe you. (laughs) So I hate pranks. But I I also understand that like... Not gross locker room culture, but that like bonding locker room culture. Well, there's a difference between yeah. ribbing and bonding and like hazing, close, paying your dues, yeah, and, and having someone steal your passport. Right, yeah, and like straight up hazing. So it, it yeah. it's it, it's really fucked up. Like the whole situation is super fucked up, and it's also fucked up that like everyone knows Vince encourages this, and right. that he the reason JBL is still around is because Vince thinks it's hilarious when he does this shit, and it's like. How can anyone speak up about this? Yeah. Like, you'll get fired. Everyone knows they'll get fired if they say anything. It's extremely And it sounds up. like people have gotten fired for it. Yeah, absolutely. And so it's... I do think it was really classy because a bunch of the audience members during SmackDown were cheering, like, fire, fire JBL. Fire Bradshaw. Or yeah. Fire Bradshaw. And there was a lot of, like, we love you, Moral signs and things like that. And I thought it was pretty classy that Moral tweeted, like... Don't worry about me. I'm going to be fine. Thank you for all your support. Be there. Support the superstars. Like, Mm -hmm. it's fine. He's a classy fucking dude. Yeah, he is. I feel, like, super fucking bad for him. Like, he was really, really good at that. And he fucking loved wrestling. And this has probably ruined wrestling for him in many ways. Like, that sucks. At least he has things like the Cruiserweight Classic to look back on fondly and, yeah. like, things like that. And it wasn't always just, like, garbage with JBL. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, it's unfortunate. And also, he could go literally anywhere. Yeah. And, like, anyone would hire him for any kind of commentary at this point. Like, he has such a good following that even being able to pull from that. Like, he's going to call MMA again. He's already said that, which is great. And, like, yeah. if he does... Was it he's with Bellator or was with Bellator? I... Eh, it doesn't matter. Don't uh, Invictica? Invicta? MMA is weird. I don't care. I don't know. I barely tolerate it. That's so funny. <laughs> oh, also, Ric Flair got kicked out of a bar. This yeah, weekend. for insulting an employee. I don't know what exactly he said to this person. I think but... Nick said that he read somewhere that he called somebody like fat. <laughs> It's so funny. That could be a lie. That's just I'm pulling from my memory. Um, you know what's also really funny? I went down a rabbit hole of Deadspin articles, which is like trashing old wrestlers. Like mm-hmm. there's a really funny ones about Ultimate Warrior being garbage. And there's mm-hmm. really funny ones about Ric Flair being garbage. There's a couple really funny ones about Jonathan Coachman <laughs> and how he's just like suckling on WWE's teat. Yep. This JBL thing made him drop his ESPN coverage of, of Well, because he was, like, weirdly defending it. Yeah, and it was like, uh, this is... He was is... like, well, I never experienced any of it, so it can't be true. Which that... was untrue. It's... Yeah, because he's, So like, easily like, provable. He's got that, like, cartoon of, like, everyone made fun of me, and then I cried. Yeah! Like, <laughs> everyone knows that this happened. Like, it's, it's just so fucked up. so stupid. Also, baseline for anything... The argument, it didn't happen to me, therefore it's not true, is not a good argument. Garbage. It's garbage. Do you think that would hold up in court of law? Well, I've never been punched in the face by that person, so I think that person's probably not guilty. Yeah. (laughs) That's not how that works. It doesn't make any sense. That's not how that works. So yeah, hopefully they fire JBL. I I don't often quote Dave Meltzer, but he had a great point that it was unlikely that uh, WWE was would fire JBL unless it got mainstream attention. And it fucking has mainstream attention now. And like, everybody's talking about it. Sports Illustrated did a piece about it, which like... Yeah, but that's people a, did a bunch of pieces about Jerry Lawler being a garbage and he was gone for like a hot second. Yeah. It's a little different. Because... Uh, Alright, I'm gonna... This, okay. is, this is shitty and it sucks, but Jerry Lawler was accused of domestic violence and... That was a woman, and Mara was a man, and people take that seriously and differently than when it's a woman. And, like, that blows, but I think that people have... And it was somebody in the company. Exactly. It wasn't just, like, Jerry Lawler's girlfriend. Right, exactly. Not that that makes it any better or whatever. Right, but I feel like there's this, like, perception and this connection to him that part of it is uh, 
maybe unconscious sexism in a lot of people, but also because there's this connection with Maro, like, because people like him better than JBL in many ways for a lot of reasons. So I, I don't know, like, it would be great if he got fired. I would really enjoy that. It would be nice if people just continue to f- chant fire Bradshaw at every fucking Smackdown. <laughs> yeah. Like, if nothing else, the, they'll have to take him off the air, which yeah. would be great. That was the first step with Lawler, too. To yeah, have they him just, off. like, put him, was like, you'll do random pre-shows and right? stuff. Right, exactly. Like, yeah, that's but fine. There are less people to chant at you. Yeah, know? exactly. <laughs> so, I don't know. We'll see. I hope something comes of it. It would be nice if anything came from anything ever. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right, let's move on to some wrestling. Okay, let's uh, do it. NXT, because it was the one after TakeOver, they did, yeah. like, the dark matches. Correct. There was Oni Lorcan versus El Vagabundo, <laughs> which was just the drifter in a uh, in a luchador mask. <sighs> it's so funny because the audience obviously knew it was the drifter, but was so over for El Vagabundo, to the point where it really looked like Orny Lo- Orny, Oni... Oni Lorcan. Oni Lorcan. What a dumb name. Uh, was actually pissed about it. <laughs> well, like, his character was too. supposed to be pissed, but then he, like, actually seemed pissed. It's oh, yeah, he moved up. He's now on 205 Live. Yes. So he's on Raw and 205 Live. Yeah. Uh, here's a... Or was he just, like... No, doing... I think that he okay. moved up. I'm pretty sure that he moved up. Um, They're doing, like, there's that, like, weird yes. gray period where everybody, like, does a couple of tapings. Bagabundo. And, like, moves up. Um, I... I don't know why this never occurred to me, but obviously NXT is also going to have to be developmental for cruiserweights. And it like didn't occur to me for some reason. And cause I what was, a dummy. I was literally having a conversation with Dev about uh, Oni Lorcan right before then. Like, yeah, I, I get it. He's okay. He's sort of like kind of weird looking and I like that, but he's just so small and I don't understand how he's going to fight these guys. And then literally the next segment was him premiering in the cruiserweights. And I was like, Oh yeah, he had duh. a match two weeks ago with Rich Swan that was really good. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. And so I was it like that he's light bulb a terrible fight promo though. Oh yeah, he's not very good. Garbage. Promo. I think that's why I like haven't connected with him at all. But his yeah. wrestling is good, and I enjoyed his match with Swan. Also, the Drifter as a comedic character it works. Yeah, it does. It him really is does. like serious asshole. Like I. It doesn't. The director as a comedic character really works. It, like, when I saw him at um, NXT last time, when the, the afternoon show, yeah. uh, he came out and he sang this, like, obnoxious song. And I was, like, I genuinely enjoyed booing him. Because yeah. he, like, made it fun. And he's a good, like, cartoon villain in mm-hmm. a lot of ways. It's just also, so bizarre they don't want him to do it. crazy arms. Yeah. He's... Uh, I do not find his face at all attractive. Oh, I do. Oh, I get I it. do not get it. I get it. <laughs> I get it. Um, but it seems like they're pushing him in a comedic way. I mean, that's when good. it come out as El Vagabundo, if it, they weren't. That's true. There was a tag team match between Heavy Machinery, which is the new tag team that they're pushing, mm-hmm. and the Bollywood Boys. It was exactly what you think it would be, but the Bollywood Boys had new gear, and they looked amazing. They looked so good. I love they had, it. like, a big... One of them had, like, a big earring, and they had, like, these giant star patches. I was all in on the Bollywood Boys. I like it. I want them to be around more. <laughs> I like them. I'm, I like them a lot. And then the crowning jewel of it was Billy and Peyton. Um, it was Peyton versus Aaliyah. Peyton and Billy looked amazing, are amazing. Everything about them is amazing. Uh, Aaliyah has like a new entrance music. And I don't know. Everything about Aaliyah was just like off the mark. It was bad. Like, I've seen zero growth in Aaliyah. Obviously, we don't see her a lot, but I've seen zero yeah. growth. The, like, faux Ariana Grande thing. The yeah. cat thing. Like, we get it. Natty's got the cat thing. <laughs> you can't. Yeah, it doesn't. I her, like, don't... back said, like, the cat's meow. And, like, it didn't work. And her wrestling was really clunky. And her character was really clunky. And it just, like, especially compared to, like, being in ring with Peyton, who is a better wrestler, but also has, like, such a clearly defined character. Like, mm-hmm. I couldn't tell if, even though Aaliyah was obviously supposed to be the the baby face, like, I couldn't tell if she was baby face or heel. Like, yeah. it was a mess. She's also a be- a much better heel. Like, they've tried to have her as a baby face for some time, and it's not very good. But when she was first signed, she was a heel and was good at that. They just need to, like, I feel like they need to scrap and start from, start fresh with Aaliyah. I completely agree. But Peyton looked right. Excellent. And Peyton won. Fantastic. Also, there was a really great tweet this week. I follow Billy Kay and Peyton on Twitter, and... I think WWE posted, like, a video of Billy Kay and 
uh, Peyton working out together and the subtitle was something like, not just partners in the ring, but partners in the gym. And then Billy quoted it, and partners in life. <laughs> and I was like, yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. <laughs> I love this. I love it so much and I never want it to end. I love it. I think it's great. It really does feel like they have like the nod and the wink from WWE to like let people right. believe that. And I love it. I think it's great. I love it so much. I'm all in. I'm all in as well. All in on that. So this week we have the Superstar Shakedown. I know that's not what it's called, but I've been calling it the Superstar Star Shakedown. Because I what think it's, it's funnier. <laughs> it's more fun. I'm all about fun. You want to shake people down? Yeah, that's fun, right? For Is one that, side of that. It's fun for me. <laughs> fair enough. That's fair. Fair enough. <laughs> oh, and tonight on NXT, Drew McIntyre. I did yell at somebody in line at Barnes & Noble because somebody said, oh, well, they have Ginger back and they have Heath back and they have Drew. And I go, no! <laughs> no! I, like, barked at them and they were like, what? I was like, 3MB is garbage? No! Don't you dare touch him! <laughs> I got very upset and a couple people looked at me and I was like, <laughs> wrestling is fake! <laughs> All on different brands. Yeah, true. They are all on different brands. Good. Good. Smart. Keep them that way. Uh-huh. We've got two-man pool. We don't need three-man band. <laughs> One-man pool. <laughs> two-man pool. <laughs> two-man pool. Oh, we forgot about news. This will make sense. The jump. Rhino ran for politics. And then this person. Oh, uh, yeah. Kane officially announced his run for mayor. And uh-huh. his logo is super wrestly and caney. <laughs> the, like, the slogan is like, the fighter that burns for the Tennessee. The that will lead us forward. <laughs> <laughs> Which, like, uh, that probably appeals to the right demographic. Fucking lean in. Right? Exactly. He's like, mm, wink nod, you all know who I am. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. It'll be fine. I... It, I can't wait to know more about this campaign. Yes, me too. <laughs> I'm glad we have boots in the ground on the ground. Yeah, boots on the ground in this county as well. <laughs> uh, so Raw opens with John Cena's music. Yes, it did. And then the beauty that is Miz and Marie says John Cena and Nikki Bella. I I had to watch it afterwards, and so I was like fast forwarding through the end, like through the commercials and through the recaps and stuff. I. Did not think it was John Cena at first. I just immediately assumed that it was Miz and Marie. I, I mean, I assumed it was Miz and Marie's too because I was like, well, I know, like, smarky me right. knows that they're not there. And also, it makes sense that Miz and Marie's would move. Mm-hmm. I love that because if you're in the moment, you're probably there being like, yeah, John Cena, god damn it. <laughs> I also it's like also to- a nice way to, like, cap the yes. the Bella Toto Bella's bullshit story yeah. and like move on because yeah. like the way that they dealt with it with it with Dean and she's like no dummy where Miz and Maurice and yeah. Miz took off her or Maurice took off her wig and was like ah, <laughs> ah, how dare you <laughs> like that was a good like button on that story yeah I agree I thought they did a really good job with it. I think they did a lot of that over this shake up shakedown thing actually like yeah they cleaned friend- up a lot of like they- WrestleMania they- loose ends and like and then they c- created some messes in my opinion we'll get to it but like yeah but in some ways too it was also like my god we're sick of charlotte and sasha and like what do we do move to another show like it it actually made a lot of sense and like credits to wwe that like i was excited to watch raw and smackdown this week and enjoyed both of them i was a little bummed that dean came over i was too i thought dean fit really well in smackdown but you know and we got the payoff of Kevin going to yeah. SmackDown. So, like, you know, they kept it even, I guess. But yeah. I was, I just liked Dean on SmackDown. Yeah. And I also was really surprised during the initial draft that the Intercontinental Belt went to SmackDown. Like, it felt very weird that Vince was willing to put it there. So, it makes sense that they would yeah. switch them now. This feels, like, appropriate and to the vision he has. it's nice because we can just, like, kibosh on the shitty Dean Corbin. Yes, thank stuff. God. Like, that's, thank God. That's excellent. I'm, I'm glad that shit thank is over. The f- thank God. Um, I thought that was great. The opening segment was great. Yeah, it got, I really enjoyed it. I was a little disappointed that the Superstar Shakedown didn't have a little bit more pomp and circumstance, but I think overall it was effective. Yeah, I agree. And I think over the two days, too, it felt like right. there was a lot of, like, 
there were so many consequences and like going into Tuesday, it was like, who is it going to be? Who are we going to see? And yeah. like, I thought they did a great job too of like, some people weren't on Raw who then did not show up on SmackDown, like Enzo and, and Cass. Yeah. And like, there were people like, I was, not, I'm going to jump ahead here, not expecting the New Day to switch over like yeah. for even a moment. And even though we, we guessed that Charlotte was gonna move like it was nice that they like kind of wrapped up the naya charlotte yes. thing and mm-hmm. then charlotte got to premiere so yes. like they did a good job with yeah. that mm-hmm. i agree speaking of the new day kofi is hurt he broke his ankle um is it because of what happened with revival or was it like we're gonna do this thing with revival so that y- there's a storyline reason why you get time off i don't know i think it may have gotten broken in the match I have a feeling. Because he walked out fine for that match. Yeah. And, like, it's possible he could have had a hairline fracture that he then needed surgery on, but the MRI looked like it snapped. So I'm pretty sure it happened in the match. Yikes. In the shatter machine. No, uh, Xavier got shatter machined. Oh, that's right. It was, and damn near almost broke his fucking neck. Oh, that's Uh, right. Yeah, it was, uh, there were two really nasty (coughs) neck drops that night, because it was the shatter machine and then the Charlotte one. Yeah. No, I, but it was it was the move that they that the revival did on Gargano where they like fucked his leg up. Yes, that's right. So it's right. like they're like it's their it's not their like in ring wrestling move. It's their like shitty fuck you move. Yeah, I wonder too when I was watching that um, tag match, it had like a really fucking weird energy at the end. Like there was a bunch of botches and like everybody felt like super off. And I wonder if it was maybe because they all knew that Kofi had broken his ankle. Well, they did that at the end, the Kofi bit at the end. So probably not. Oh, I guess that's true. I don't know. I think it, was, it. I think yeah. if the any weird energy like those people have never wrestled before. Yeah, I guess that's true. Sometimes that happens. Like they're different styles for yeah, sure. That's true. They are really so. different styles. But it is still nice to see the revival up. Yeah, absolutely. I think my notes just say Re- revival kills Xavier. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> but thankfully, they didn't kill him. Yes, He's thank fine. God. There's a backstage segment with uh, Neville and TJP where Neville was like, Well, Cenarius is taking all of your all of your screen time. Classic blah, blah, blah. I'm the little devil on your shoulder. And then Austin Aries was like, Are you serious right now? <laughs> you can't be that stupid, right? And then TJ was like, Nope, I am that stupid. <laughs> Fuck you. I, like, I loved when he uh, turned on Aries after their match and the crowd just stanted you you still suck yeah. even though it's like you are a lot better as a shitty heel but you do still suck like he has no personality at all like none yeah which checks because his wrestling is really good but he has no personality he has when he no wrestles. personality yeah like he like, like even technically that, he's really good yeah and like yeah that, he was way better in tna when he wrestled with a mask yeah like he just when you can see that his face doesn't move at all it's like Oh, God, no. What are you doing here? This I mean, is the bad. character that he was cast in in Southpaw is like his character. Yeah, it really, really is. I don't think he realized that that was a personal dig on him. When yeah. John Cena was like, you will be this guy. Yeah, right. You're perfect at this. Hint, 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 hint. <laughs> Riveting. <laughs> Riveting. Uh, Seth Rollins uh, was like, uh, I, I probably should go to SmackDown because <laughs> Stephen McMahon don't like me no more. And then Kurt Angle was like, no, I'm a baby face. You can stay. And then Samoa Joe was like, I'm going to kill you. And then Seth was like, psych, no, I got your number. And then everyone was like, oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> yeah, accurate. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very accurate recap. Yeah. I will say I'm a little sad that the KO Samoa Joe Triple H staple is no longer together. That kind of sucks. Unless it means that Triple H can move freely between both shows, which would be pretty dope. Yeah. But it also gives Kevin Owens a chance to not be a Seth Rollins y type yeah. champion and just to be a champion on his own. Yeah, that's true. And like to not have the Jericho thing. I think it kind of makes sense to let Kevin develop on his own outside of uh Yeah. Triple H. Yeah, that's that true. is his name. That's <laughs> that's one of his names. Uh, yes, there was a backstage segment with Kevin Owens. Where he's like, "Well, why don't you find Chris Jericho and ask him how he feels?" Oh, you can't. He's at home healing. <laughs> hello, hello, I hello, him. Hello. I'm Kevin Owens. Charlie, get out of here. <laughs> Charlie, uh, I love the way that he talks to Charlie, but I am excited to see him interact with Renee all the time. Yeah, like that's awesome. Also, like the moment I realized he was going to be on Talking Smack all the time, I was like. <gasps> This is the greatest thing ever! (laughs) He is like the fill-in for, like, Miz. He's like the new new tension. Absolutely. Which is good. Mm -hmm. Uh, There was a match between Charlotte versus Nia, which we talked about. It was a nice little button on the story. Uh, It was a pretty good match. Charlotte had great character work in it, I thought. Uh, Nia... Almost killed her twice. Almost killed her twice. (laughs) That was terrifying. (laughs) Nia needs to kind of get her shit together. 
Well, I think part of it is that Charlotte is very tall and all of the other women are yeah, a lot smaller like, than she is. Naya needs to get her shit together yeah, a little bit. Both of these things are true. That's fair. That's fair. Fair, fair, fair. There was a package about how great Finn is. Yeah. And then there was a match between Ginger and Finn where Ginger just straight knocked him out. Knocked his ass out. Knocked his ass out. To where he literally crumbles and his face just like scoots across the ring. Yeah, he got ring burn on his like eyebrows. Right above his eyebrows and on then his like, forehead. On his nose. Yeah, all the way down his nose. Like that. Remember that time Brock Lesnar got ring burn because uh, Seth Rollins curb stomped him and he had like. Uh, it was just like a little bit across his cheek and everyone was like, holy shit, he gave him ring burn. This is crazy. Like Finn picked his head up and I was like, ah! And his <laughs> eyes were all like, it was like, like little birds around his head. Yeah. We, it's just, I cannot believe how nasty. much he can fucking wrestle when he's injured. It just yeah. blows my he's mind. He's a machine. He's a machine. And then, so Finn wins, even though he was like, his brain was all scrambled. Bray Wyatt had a promo where he was like, I'm on road. Now. I Ugh. gasped. I was not expecting that. It was that. great, except for now, like, thanks for telling me the ending of the next pay per view match. Is it for the belt? I thought it wasn't even for the belt. I thought it was for the belt. Oh, I thought it was that they were just having this match so that oh, Bray could be okay. like, fuck you, Randy. I hope that's what it's for, and I hope Bray gets to win. Yeah, that would be awesome. Also, I feel like this is, if it wasn't that, this is a great excuse to make it that. Have Bray be like, I don't even want your fucking belt. I just want to beat yeah. the shit because out of you. Because I really like that, and I like the idea of, I don't know, I like it in theory, but immediately I was like, oh, great. Feed the weirdo to the demon. We all know how this ends. Yeah, but they'll have a great program. Yeah, it will have. They will have a great program. I don't know. I just like. I just have given up on Bray Wyatt again. Yeah, it does feel like we're back to LOL. Fuck you, Bray. Although, like, I wrote if they're gonna, massive side eye. If they're gonna make him like a Mick Foley character, where it's like he gets a couple of wins and everybody just fucking loves his gimmick. Like, I wish that they would just let Bray say, like, I don't give a fuck if I win a belt. Like, it would make it would do so much for his character. Yeah, to just I just want to come here and like ruin your life, right? Like, I'll fight you for your belt, and if I win it, I win it. But I'm gonna ruin your fucking life until then. Like, that I wish they would like, just yeah, do that. They should do that. I never even thought of. It like that, but they should do that. It, in some ways, it kind of feels like this this character now on Raw sort of almost feels that way. Like, I literally just came here to destroy you. Like, and I'm not going to fight you for a belt. I'm just going to rip you apart. Rowan and Luke are on SmackDown. Yes. Braun is clearly 100% his own character now, so yes, you don't have to worry about that. Yes, divorced from the so Wyatt family. Good. There was a match between The Miz and Sami Zayn. Sami got a win on his way out, Yay! which was good. I thought that was great. That was a fun match. Yeah, I really and enjoyed it. And the interference it. with Maurice, and like, it's all good. Mm-hmm. Yep, it all good. Yep, all good. There was an interview with Roman Reigns where <sighs> Michael Cole was like, Roman Reigns, how do you feel about blah, blah, blah. And then Braun Strowman just straight murdered him. Braun Strowman straight murdered him. Just beat him up. He, there was one point where he picked him up, threw him across the room into like three tables. I love the gimmick. I know like, I know that he didn't lift the ambulance up himself, but the camera work was great because you couldn't see what was helping. And Braun, like, that looked awesome. Him yeah. flipping the ambulance is, like, such old school corny wrestling, and I thought it was great. Yeah, it was really good. And, like, you know, lots of people are going to be pissed at Roman Reigns for a really long time. This is a great way to deal with it. Fucking write him off. He's not, He isn't on either show right now. Like, it also feels very much to me, like... All of the shield is on Raw right now. That does not seem like it's going to continue to happen. So I wonder if they're going to have Roman be injured for a couple of months and then bring him back on SmackDown and like I don't throw know if they'll him let him be injured for a couple months. I mean, a month. I mean, they said that he has fractured ribs, internal injuries. He has a broken leg. Like they gave him like thirty-seven injuries. Michael Cole <laughs> a, read off like a whole goddamn li- grocery list of shit. So I feel like this is actually a great time to just have him gone. Also, maybe he's filming a movie. Like that this, would be great. This to is give a, him a movie to get get him off for a while. To yeah, let, like it because it's like not. I mean, you know, all heat is good heat, but it seems like distracting heat. It doesn't yeah, seem like good heat. It exactly. seems like a huge distract, distraction. And especially after they like they have him do this like massively heel promo and like it was so good and it was so like seeing him be like you're in the palm of my hand like yes we hate you let us boo you all we want to do is boo you and then to come back and have this dead eye baby face promo like oh okay we get it roman's a baby face and then just get crushed like that is what i want to see of baby face roman i want to get i want his life to end i hate (laughs) it so much like i want his life to end resurrect him on smackdown as as the fucking new undertaker and as a bad guy i don't give a shit just do like anything different with it bring him back without a shirt on that would be i would uh, on board immediately <laughs> <laughs> there was an eight man tag match it was uh shizaro complete with kilts 
and the Hardys mm. versus the Shining Stars and Derclerb. Uh, I mean, this was just a match to get the tag teams on. It was, like, kind of pointless. Yeah, whatever. They were also talking about, like, how many tag teams they have in the division, yeah. which I thought was a good way to do that, like, to make it relevant to what we were seeing. And, like, there are a lot of tag teams on Raw now. It feels like they've really Well, the stacked. Shining Stars moved, too. Yeah, that's true. Also, this was one of the segments where the Drifter was just drifting around. See, I didn't see him at all during this one. Yeah. The only time I noticed it was during um, Naya and Charlotte. Yeah, he drifted around. He's just drifting. He's just drifting around. <sighs> what the fuck am there I? Was a, there was the best segment of the night, in my opinion. It was a backstage segment with Emma, yes! <laughs> uh, Dana reading a book, How to Be Your Own Protege. <laughs> with, complete with da- Dana, like, confused, cross-eyed. Like, yes. Mm, yes. And then Emma comes out and is like, okay, I'm back, let's go. And she was like, No. I'm going to be on my own oh, now, and I may not be the best, but I'm going to work really hard, which I thought worked. Dana being, like, too. a baby face in this way specifically. It's still very selfish, which works for a character, but yeah. it's, it's not like baby face like Bailey, where she's like, we're all on my team. Let me give you a hug. It's like, no, I'm a baby face because you're evil, and I don't like you. That's the only reason I'm a baby face. Yep, exactly. Uh, I loved I loved all of, like, the stuff with Emma, where she mm-hmm. was just like, Okay, I'm here to pick up the pieces that I left behind. <laughs> that was great. She also had a, uh, she had a couple of really good tweets, like following up on it towards Dana. I also liked Emma. when Dana was like, Emma, if that is your real name. That was great. I was just like, oh, Dana, Dana. <laughs> Feud between Dana and Emma. All on it. Oh, I'm totally in on it. And if at the end they wind up back together, totally into that as well. Yeah. <laughs> like, great, awesome. This was followed by a segment where Sasha came to the ring and was completely a baby face, still had a lot of hard time talking, complete flippered. Uh, whatever. It's just, she's not good at talking as a baby face. She introduced her best friend, Bailey, mm-hmm. and then they were having a moment, and then while they were, like, circle jerking each other, fucking Alexa Bliss came out, which was the best well, way to have Well, hold her. on, wait, there was something else that happened, too, that, like, I think really got lost in this moment, that Sasha and Bailey were having this, like, circle jerk, and then at the very end of it, right before her music hit, Sasha said, and that time is over, and looked like she was about to fucking punch Bailey in the face, and then the music went off. So I feel like this is even more, like, right. this is just it's one more step. There, right, yeah. and so it felt like this is gonna happen right now, and, like, Bailey didn't, or Sasha didn't, like, defend Bailey in any way. She, like, physically moved away from her after that as well. So I feel like they did that very well. That it and was she's like, working, it's happening. Like, oh, shit. Heel on, she's working heel on Twitter. Right, exactly. So it's like, oh, this is happening. It's finally happening. But, but yes, I agree. Alexa, that like, was, coming out and being like, oh, uh, I was shocked. No, you guys disgust I me. was shocked. I was not expecting her to switch brands. Like, she felt so SmackDown. And, like, but it's great. She is. She's great. I fucking love her. And they need a strong talker. <laughs> really, they really bad. Do. They sent Charlotte over to SmackDown and she was somehow their so- strongest talker. Like, that is amazing to me also that, like, in a year, Charlotte has become one of their strongest female talent. That yeah. it blows my mind. It's like, good for you. You obviously worked your ass off. She really did. And I mean, when you're thrust in the spotlight that much, like, you either put up or shut up. Yep, exactly. I was a little disappointed that Mickey James came out. I, I just, a I little. thought it was just, like, such a good moment with the three of them. Yeah. But they need more women. They do need more women, and, like, it's fun that, like, Mickey James, I guess, like, followed Alexa to, like, annoy Alexa. And I'm glad we're done with uh, Becky and Mickey. Yes, me too. But I just, like, I want it. I just, it was such a perfect moment. Alexa's face when Mickey's music hit was just like, I'm, no. Ugh. I like it, too, because I feel like we never really did get a resolution to their story. Because, like, they yeah. were together for a while, like, the whole time Mickey was there until WrestleMania, basically, which was only two weeks ago. So I feel like... It was only two weeks only ago. Only two weeks ago. So I feel like it, it's also satisfying that I want to see Mickey be there and be like, I'm going to ruin your life. I'm going to ruin every part of your life. I'm going to ruin all of your matches. I'm going to ruin everything about this. And, like, to watch Alexa work with that, like, she's going to be... She's already great. She's going to be even better by the time she's done working this part with Mickey. Except for, is it going to be a program with Mickey? Because Naya came out and just, like, trashed Mickey and was like... I think... <clears throat> it feels like Alexa and Naya are about to team up, which Well, they're, I, like, real-life BFFs. They're, like, the perfect pairing, too, because they're so different. Like, they're, they're a very interesting visually com- combination. They play very different kinds of heels, like... Naya's not a great talker and Alexa is a great talker. Like, they can really put them together and, like, help them grow together. So I feel like 
yes, she's still going to have Mickey involved. I also feel like Alexa is going to try and do like run for the belt with Bailey or against Emma or against Dana or against whoever. Yeah. And Mickey's just going to come out and fuck all of her shit up. That's like fair. Mickey doesn't even need to have a bunch of matches. She can just show up and fuck with Alexa and like, that's fine. That's totally cool. Yeah. For once, it feels like they have stuff to do with the Raw Women's Division. There's that's so not many just women. Charlotte and uh, Sasha, which to be fair, I liked for a really long time. Right, it just went on too long. Yeah. Which, like, maybe that's a mark that they're booking them like the men, because many of the men's feuds go on far too long. Right. So, nature and we of the did business. did get some really good matches out of it. It's true. That's right. The main event was Dean Ambrose versus Kevin Owens. Dean Ambrose won. Mm hmm. Which is, like, a nice way to welcome Dean Ambrose to Raw and then, yep. like, farewell to Kevin Owens. And then Jericho came out and was like, Meh, 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 Kevin Owens. Meh, 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 meh. I got the sparkly jacket. <laughs> that's how that ended. Yep. Mm hmm. Meh, meh, meh. <laughs> So SmackDown opens with Kevin Owens, obviously freshly shaven and in a oh nice God. blue suit. <laughs> that <laughs> I am. I mean, I feel like we all knew that like Kevin Owens was probably going to retain at Payback, but it does. Yeah. It's just kind of a little silly. I feel like. Yeah. Also, Randy Orton is having the match with Bray Wyatt on the Payback one. He's not having it on the yeah. the SmackDown one. Can you imagine how pissed you would be if you bought tickets for Backlash wanting to see Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt and you don't get to see that anymore? Well, you might get to see. AJ Styles versus Randy Orton. Yeah, but it still seems weird. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. The star card subject to change. Anyways, Kevin Owens came out, gave a Kevin Owens promo, and was like, I'm here. I'm the best. I'm the face this of America. This is my show now. The I'm the face, face of America. Of America. <laughs> and then Baron Corbin came out and was like, brum, 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 brum. I roll. I, a wolf. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, fuck that guy. And uh, then Sami Zayn came out, and Kevin Owens had the best reaction. Oh, I loved it. Looked it looked like Kevin Owens was going to burn the whole building down. And he was oh, like, why are you here? You always follow me, everyone. I fucking loved it. That was perfect. I loved that Sami Zayn, Mickey james him. It was so Sammy great. Sami Zayn, Mickey like, james him. Hell, yeah. It was the it was the opposite. It was like, yeah. I'm the baby face, and I'm here to make sure that you don't fuck everybody's life up. You thought our fight was over? We have a fight forever t-shirt. We're going to fight forever. <laughs> And then AJ came out, so then it was all of them being like, well, I'm the guy that built SmackDown, and I'm the guy that's just the guy that everybody loves, and I'm the guy that's got the belt, who this is Kevin Owens' the country. Belt. And the then- United States Championship. Not the world title. <laughs> like, it's so bizarre to me that all yeah, whatever. these guys are And then Baron Corbin was like, I can't fight for the Intercontinental Championship, so I guess I'm going to fight for this. <laughs> Which was solid logic, I guess. He was like, that does suck that I didn't get, I pinned him and then didn't get to fight for this belt. Like, so I guess I'm just going to do this. <sighs> Fine, I guess. Uh, Daniel Bryan came out and said, so the US title is on the line at Payback and whoever wins that, the title's coming here. So Chris Jericho could technically come here, but like, that's probably not going to happen. Uh, so anyway. then they had a number one contendership match later in the night between Corbin and AJ and Sammy, which was a really good match. Mm-hmm. It was the really good. The end was excellent. I liked to see Sammy and AJ wrestle. That, yeah. that was really fun. Yeah, I like them a lot. Um, I guess that they're saving Sammy and Kevin? I don't know. I good. don't really understand why AJ won, though. Like, that seemed weird. They need stuff for AJ to do. AJ versus Kevin will be really good. Yeah, and I guess they just need something to do with him until he, like, fights with Randy. Right. I guess that's mm-hmm. the plan. Yeah, exactly. And that they have this, like, time like to kill. like the plan. Spermy Randy Orton. Speaking of Randy Orton, he fought Eric Rowan, which was dumb. Eric Rowan's dumb. He needs to go away. I like his new mask. I. It's creepy. If as he's fuck. not with Bray, then like fuck it, do something. They said else. that he was left behind as his um, specter. Why he's ineffective? I don't know. The he's... only reason he even got over on Randy a little bit is because Bray Wyatt interfered. And he didn't win. He just, like, knocked him out with some stairs. Yeah, that's, I that's mean. dumb. Eric Rohn's dumb. Yeah. That's I don't you, like it. You need guys to lose, and he's good at that. I don't like his face. That's fair. It is <laughs> very scary. He is scary. <laughs> so he does that well. <laughs> then, this match, sleeper match, the Alphas and the Usos was so good. It was really good. It was so good, and I'm really glad that the Usos uh, retained. Yeah, I thought the American Alpha won for a second and was like, wait, wait. Yeah, there was, there was a weird count in the middle that I was like, yeah. It seemed real like somebody messed up. Like, yeah. I was like, that up, was a three count. It was like, hardcore <laughs> three count. Yeah. But they recovered from it and the uh, Uso still won, which I, I like them as the champs right now. Yeah. I think I it really works. They're doing really good work. And then the Shining Stars came out and they beat up American Alpha in the most unbelievable storyline ever. Oh my God. I couldn't even also, believe like, it. I wanted Enzo, no t-shirt. I wanted Enzo and Cass so bad and I got the Shining Stars. Like, 
what the fuck? Hashtag WWE. Oh, so disappointing. They got no reaction. Yeah. It was sad. Everyone hates them because their gimmick is awful. Right? Like, I think Vince thought that they would boo them and everyone was like, we literally don't care. We literally don't care at all. Please move the show. Right? At least, I guess they're better. They're not, like, timeshare people anymore. Like, I feel bad for them, honestly. Like, they don't know what the fuck to do with them. Uh, I feel like they should just leave. Yeah, they should just leave. <laughs> I totally agree. Ugh, That's whatever. more from a selfish perspective of, like, I just don't want to see you anymore. You're I would like, much rather see Brizango than these fucking Yes! Clowns. Right? Yes. Where the fuck's Brizango? Who the shit knows? Brizango. They're still Brizango. on SmackDown, right? Buckle up. Buckle up. It was followed by a match between Mojo Rally and Jinder Mahal with Gronk again. Oh my god. I don't give a shit. I don't give <sighs> a shit. Yeah. Who cares? Who cares? <sighs> Remember, did you ever go to MSG basketball games? Oh yeah, all the time. When the Izone would, like, lift up the, the papers during free throws. Who cares? Yes, I do remember that. <laughs> I participated in some of those. Yeah, the Izones, they're dicks, but it's still funny. It is very fun to be a part of. <laughs> the women's division. Uh, Shane has all the active women come out. So then we see, like, Nikki's not there. Mm-hmm. Um, and James Osworth, he came out. <laughs> And then he started, like, yeah, like, talking again, and, like, he stole the microphone from Shane and was kind of like Becky's face and was like, Carmella's the best, and then fucking Naomi snatched the mic from him and was like, Carmella, you better watch your side, chick, before I chin check him. <laughs> chin check her. Chin check her. And then she just like, sorry, Shane, here's your microphone back. <laughs> that was a great moment. Also, Ellsworth called himself Carmelsworth. <laughs> I am fine with it. He's like, <sighs> whatever. And honestly, if all of the women just get to beat up James Ellsworth, that's like the perfect spot right? for that's him. That's like the perfect spot for him. I totally agree. And like, I want Carmella to be back with Enzo and Cass. She looks like, so good lately. She did look really she good. Looked, like that dark, like burgundy lipstick she's been rocking lately. <sighs> so good. So good. Yeah. It looks great on her. So if he's just going to be like... Their valet, I, I'm, I guess I can get down with that. That's Becky like a had good like a really head. savage tweet that was like, James Ellsworth, the only diva left on the roster. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he's got a contract. They have to do something with him. <laughs> That's true. Uh, and then Shane goes into like, her father is a legend, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. we all think it's Charlotte. And nope, it's Tamina. I was so excited. I started to cheer. I'm really excited too. I'm so I feel glad. like Tamina's never really gotten her just to do. And I hope like in the state of the division, vision now they like let her do it yeah also like i know they always like bill her as like a bruiser blah blah, blah but like she is just as pretty as naya is. she's just yeah. as pretty as like absolutely like she i feel like <clears throat> they really overlook that like not that you need to be beautiful to be like a women's wrestler but like to me that's really pretty yeah i totally agree she always reminded me of like she looks like the super awesome sassy mom at the pta who would like beat your ass if you step to her. Like, that's what her look has always reminded me yeah. of. But she, and she kind of has like, always works. played the, like, sassy mom. Like, when she was with AJ, she was like, I'm here to protect her. Yeah, and, like, when she was with Team Bad, she was yeah. kind of the, like, I mother I just hand. want her to, like, be able to wrestle and to, like, actually live up to the nomenclature of, like, being this, like, badass. Yeah, and it looks sort of like she's a heel, which is good, because then she and Naomi can compete with each other. Right. And, like, I like the idea of them feuding as opposed to teaming up again. Right. Even though I love Team Bad. And then we get Charlotte, which was which, amazing. I'm, I I'm happy. wait to see Naomi and Charlotte. Oh, I think Naomi and Charlotte is going to be great. I think that it'll be fun to see Charlotte and Becky again yeah. after all of this time. What it's like to watch them wrestle again. I think that'll be great. Like, awesome. Great. Mix it up. Charlotte Throw was, all these people together. Charlotte was the right move. Yeah, I totally agree. I hope that SmackDown signs some women from the tournament. That that's how they start to bring people up to their roster, too. That would There's be only nice. one more woman on Raw than... Because I'm not counting Summer, because they don't count Summer. I'm not counting that's Alicia, because I'm not because they don't count her. There's really only one extra woman on Raw. Really? Yeah. Awesome. That's so, great. Also, like, SmackDown has kind of been locking it down, so I, I feel... Yeah, I feel that's fine true. with SmackDown. Also, actually, no, they're, they're completely equal, because really? they get Lana. <sighs> yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Lana, whose new theme song is what I like to call iPhone ringtone burlesque. Oh, oh my god. Lana, whose new gimmick is I wear this party city hat and flail around in a chair for a while. Oh my god. It's funny because they showed it from above at first and all they saw was the blonde hair and I thought it was Dana and I was really excited for a second and then was just 
massively Ugh. disappointed. As a gimmick, hot girl dancing, not a great d- gimmick. Yeah. Dancing gimmicks usually don't do anything for anybody. Right. Also, like, that was a hot mess of a video. Oh, it was bad. Top to bottom. Oh, it was bad. A mess. <sighs> yeah, it was not good. I Oh, God. What is wrong with just being a really good manager? Why do people always have to, like, switch over? Lana. <sighs> I don't know. Ugh. What did she speak in a Russian accent in the video? Or she didn't she... speak at all. Oh, okay. It was forty-four seconds of nonsense. I wonder if she is gonna have the accent. I doubt it. <sighs> she's not built with Rusev anymore. She's not. I mean, they're on the same show, but she's not. Ugh. There's nothing about that. That red. That red eighth grade jazz <laughs> recital. Not. Russian oh ballerina. God. This if is they, how they finally if drop they wanted to do, If they wanted to do a... Yeah, dancing, why didn't they do Russian why ballerina? Do hardcore, scary Russian ballerina. You know who has the most discipline in the entire world? Russian ballerinas. Oh, you're totally right. That would have been so much better. And she's a way better heel. Yeah. Oh, missed opportunity. Hardcore missed opportunity. Oh, gross. Oh, this is going to be a train wreck. In other good news, though... Aiden English is back to the drama king. I love it. I and love it's it. So stupid and it's so great. I love it. I love to boo him because it's like, oh god, god damn it, Aiden English, boo, stop it, but don't stop. I want boo. him to bring it. I want him to have the scarf again and the hat. I want him to go all in. Uh, I, I love they... that he had the, like artist pants back. Yeah. He's like, oh, you had these in your closet, ready to go. And it was a fun match between him and Ty. I love that the crowd is still super hot for Ty. Yeah, like, me too. I. I, I was so happy for both of them. Yeah. And people seem like genuinely excited to like engage with Aiden English as yeah. well. It wasn't just like, fuck you, get the hell out of here. It's like, oh, thank God you're not the Vaughn villains anymore. And it's smart that if they're going to have multiple singing things, that the Drifter is going to be on Raw and that Aiden's going to be on SmackDown. Right, exactly. Dolph Ziggler came out and was like, hi, I'm trash. Trash! <laughs> and then Shinsuke Nakamura was like, hi, I'm Shinsuke Nakamura. And then Dolph Ziggler was like, I'm scared of you. <laughs> I loved it. I thought it was great. It was nice to see another yeah. audience, like, fucking lose their shit for him. Like, he, I just think he has and I such just appeal. See, it's funny. Nick doesn't watch NXT, and he was watching SmackDown with me, and he goes, when Shinsuke came out, he goes, that guy's weird. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's his whole thing. That's his whole thing. He's so good. He's super weird and really good. I love it. I think it's so wonderful. And someday, fucking American audiences will understand how to yell. A little better. It was a little better a yesterday. Little better. I feel We're like... There. They're starting to get it. I honestly starting think that to get it. He has to do it with them for a while. Yeah. Uh, or somebody needs to, like, one of the WWE people needs to start it. I don't think yeah. that he can be the one to say it, but somebody else needs to be like, we're going to leave this hear, chair. Yeah. I just want to hear a whole crowd do it. Uh, it's going to be. I just can't wait to see, you know, we hate Dolph Ziggler or whatever. Dolph Ziggler is very capable of putting on good matches. Absolutely. So I am excited for this match, and I can't wait to see Dolph Ziggler get Kinshasa to death. Yes, Absolutely. L Collins at another L had the best tweet ever where she said, I was like, oh, this is the only way I will ever care about Dolph. And she was like, the only thing I want from Dolph is to watch him get kneed in the head by an immigrant as many times as possible. <laughs> yes. And I was like, oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. You spoke yes. to my soul. <laughs> on Talking Smack, uh, Dolph Ziggler came on and was like, hi, I'm eating an apple. And Renee was like, he, Renee was like, are you eating an apple? And Dolph Ziggler's like, yeah, I'm eating an apple. What are you doing with your hands? <laughs> and she was like, no. Nothing. <laughs> so stupid. So stupid. And then he was like, uh, I don't. It, was he talking about I don't a ring? Know. No, he had. Oh, no. maybe. Maybe he was making. Maybe he was making a joke. I think he may have been making a reference to her but ring. But in like all Dolph Ziggler jokes, it didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> and then he was like, Well, I don't know who Shinsuke Nakamura is. I only follow SmackDown. Bloop 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 bloop. But this audience seems to like him. I guess I'm Dolph Ziggler. Blah. I'm trash. <sighs> Whatever. And then he Jinder can make Mahal- words come yeah. out of his face effectively. That's fine. Like and then Jinder Mahal was like, "Hi, I'm Jinder Mahal. I have this body. I'm here. I'm Jinder Mahal." Yeah, right. Like uh, I'm so torn about Jinder now because he they made a really good point about. I think Corey said on commentary on Monday, like no one has been working harder or dieting harder than him, which That's is true. true. It absolutely is true. And he but, has made like incredible strides as a wrestler. Yeah, absolutely. Like people fuck up. Like yeah, exactly. So I f- like part of me is like, oh man, you, you you really fucked up this return for Finn. But also like now you're on this but new we show. We also don't know how long like, he's on the shelf, and we also like yeah. shit happens. Like Kofi yeah. broke an ankle. Yeah, like, exactly. It could be two weeks and then he's back. I'm pretty sure Mustafa Ali had a concussion from that fucking uh, 2-5 live from two weeks ago too. When, yeah. Uh, 
uh, Austin won the number one contenders because he uh, fucked his head up real bad. So I feel like, you know, it's okay. People come back quickly from that stuff sometimes. It used to be a two week uh, waiting period. And now it's just as soon as you pass the impact test, they lay back in. LOL, concussions are fake. <laughs> and then Kevin Owens came on and just slayed on talking smack. Uh-huh. I like that he was like, oh, oh, are you about to have a baby? Oh, I have a little girl. But you knew that. Didn't care enough to sign me a SmackDown make sure I could provide for my family. But, you know, good to be here. <laughs> <laughs> so, great. Kevin Owens forever. Uh, he's the best. I he's love just him. the best. I do miss his stupid beard, though. It'll be back. I know. I feel like it's like fresh shave, fresh show. Like he's just yeah. going to grow it back. He, he almost always has a beard. A, I just need like the big, great big bushy beard. Yeah. It's coming. Did you watch 205 Live? Yes, I did. Uh, I thought there were good moments. Uh, the best moment, notably, was uh, when Alicia Fox made a fucking <laughs> stop looking at me swan joke. <laughs> <laughs> she knew exactly what she was doing because she had like a little she like really had to suppress her smile she was like got it <laughs> nailed it nailed she also it. looked incredible yeah I mean there were good <laughs> there was good stuff all over it like Tazawa Tazawa had a good moment like hey buddy I'm here mm-hmm. ring 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 I'm, remember this he yeah. looked so pleased with himself when he held that bell up like shit and grin it was me I did it <laughs> Fuck yeah. And then yeah. Like, put it back down. <laughs> if anybody's going to get me interested in Brian Kendrick, it's going to be Tazawa. I, I completely guess. agree. And Mustafa Ali looked great again. Like, yeah. he's getting a great push. And mm-hmm. uh, I guess. I love him. Drew Gulak was there. He was? <laughs> yeah, he was watching from the back, making notes, making calls with his political whatever. I don't even remember that. <laughs> whatever. Austin Aries had a good backstage segment where he, like, dabbed with a banana and was like, dabbing some, I'm going to eat this banana. Right. He still dabs in 2017. And I was like, ah, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> then at the end TJP had a match with Gallagher which was good but I thought it was too long yeah it was it was way too long but it, it was, was good and now TJP and Neville are friends whatever the show was good friends. the Winky. thing <laughs> that we need to talk about though is fucking so Rich Swan has the match with Johnny Ocean whatever who cares then at the end Rich Swan's like you know I told Noam Dar that I or, or I told Alicia Fox that I'm the one that's been giving her the gifts blah 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 and then Noam came out and was like no you're wrong blah 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 I'm so glad he's back I'm totally the one that did it. And then Alicia came out and was like, babe, I trust you. Like, our relationship oh, no. means everything. Like, this guy's a creep. Stop looking at me, swan. So smart. Go for Alicia. Alicia is doing such a good job. I love, I love it so it. much. And then great. the fucking, like, powder all over her face and, like, how she was just, like, pulling her hair back and down. Like, I'm about to lose my shit. <laughs> I'm really keeping it together. And honestly, in any other situation, I would be like, that outfit is stupid. Why are you wearing that? Before Alicia Fox, in this specific storyline, it worked perfectly. It was so good. Her weird, like, ringleadery. She looked like a fancy magician. <laughs> like, yeah. loved it. It was weird, but it, like, it works for, it. like, the insanity that is Alicia Fox. Yeah, absolutely. She's, She's doing just a great crushing job. it. She's it's crushing great. it. Great. I, I mean, it. what's to say about like two hundred five live that my favorite moment was like Alicia Fox. I know. Not that like I mean I'm not trying to shit on two hundred five live, but like Alicia Fox has like one of the most compelling yeah, storylines. It, it's like I said, she really feels like a fun new snazzy Sherry. Like yeah. it, she she is making all of these people elevate to her level, and it's weird that she's the one to do that because most of the time when you see her in women's matches, it's like ugh, she's just the jobber. She's the one who they right. who they need for the pin. Like. Who cares? But like she legitimately is elevating these people to be She's up on this level job. with her. I, and it's, I love, I love it. Out. I think it's great. And like it's not the only thing I care about on Two of Five Live, no. but it's some of the best character work that's being done. And a lot of these guys really, really, need character really work. need character work. Like yeah. they don't need to put Jack Gallagher with her because he already has a very defined character. And like it's nice to see uh, Gnome be able to push people who right. need character work. And like with Swan her. and Gnome clearly have like defined characters, but like all three of them working together, it's just like they're yeah. all just doing a good job yeah they're it's, all like cementing great. it together it's really it's good and like that's what Cedric was doing too until he got injured yeah it's great so just to go over it uh the shakedowns Raw got Miz and Maurice Dean Kurt Hawkins <laughs> I love that he lost his first match too it was like who's this guy oh yeah Jobber. Big Show I didn't even write it down because it was so quick Big Show was like <laughs> Big Show just like body checked him and then walked away yeah <laughs> Kurt Hawkins, Alexa, Mickey, Apollo Cruz, Kalisto, Two Man Pool, and David Otunga. Yes. And then SmackDown got Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Jinder Mahal, Primo and Epico, Charlotte, Sin Cara, Rusev, Lana, New Day, Byron Sexton, and then the return return of Tamina. I can't mm. wait to see New Day on Talking Smack. Oh yeah! I, I didn't even think wait. about that. Are you kidding oh. me? How did you not immediately? Because I was about thinking that? about Kevin Owens. Duh. That's oh, fair. Shit. That's fair. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh, that's so smart. 
Any other thoughts about the wrestling this week? It was good. It yeah, was it was like, fun. It, it was, was really a, fun. It was a really fun week. I feel like this was also a great week to like it, their post WrestleMania. They had they like had this restart with that, and I feel like this is a great way to keep people watching who just started with this season. Like yeah. keep these people around because like this is fun and it's exciting. These people and, like, have come back to Mania, and then they're yeah, like, yeah they're definitely like on an uptick. So it feels very fresh, and yeah. like I think they can keep pushing this to be fresh until SummerSlam, which is what they really want. Like, mm-hmm. that's their other big time where it's like, draw all these people in, make cool this like... Cool for the summer. Oh, God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it's... I think they're doing a great job. It's it's bizarre, but I'm, I'm really enjoying it, actually. So it was good this week. It was good this week. We have one new review. All right. The highlight of Thursday mornings, all which right. is generous. It's more like after. Yeah, that's very generous. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Still, it's from CM Pork. Ooh, hello. Stella and Aaron run one of the most entertaining wrestling podcasts you could ever ask for. Rundowns of both WWE and the indies, sometimes. Great side tangents <laughs> about everything from outer space sex dreams with wrestlers to the internal question of why is Dolph Ziggler and can he just not? <laughs> and an equal amount of pointed, insightful critique and pure joy and celebration in the magic of good old-fashioned pro wrestling. Also, how can you give anything but five stars to a podcast that starts with wine glasses clinking and Bailey's theme music? Also, Aaron and Stella are just delightful on social media as they're as they are on the show. Super friendly and just the best ladies to send Dolph Ziggler roast to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nailed it. <laughs> Thank you. That's our brand. <laughs> it's our brand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck you, Dolph Ziggler. Uh, it's great. It's a great life. All right. It is a great life. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Anything you want to... Except for I have to go to work tomorrow. And I have to do two burlesque shows. Ugh. <laughs> that sounds... Uh, burlesque. Terrible. <laughs> that's how I feel about burlesque lately. That, yeah, that sounds terrible. Uh, that sounds like how I feel about all the homework I'm going to have to do. <laughs> even when I do a good job. And then I'm like, I literally... Oh, this is funny. This is a side tangent. So, you know... Wait until the end this time. Wait until the end. <laughs> yeah, really kept it together. No tell. Hell yeah. Um, so I obviously have really, like... Vivid dreams. And I've been feeling very, like, meh about burlesque lately. Which, you know, that happens with artistic yeah. things. You go ebb and flow. I had a dream. My literal dream. My subconscious could not be more clear. I gave one of my signature numbers to somebody. And they were doing it. And they were doing a bad job. And I was like, ugh, I'm going to take it back. This is awful. They don't know how to do it. I was, like, trying to be nice. And then I get up to do it. It's my Hulk number. So, you know, mm-hmm. my Hulk number starts with me, like, crawling through the audience. And then there's, like, a sound effect that says Hulk smash. And I rip my shirt off, right? So I like do, I, in the dream, I'm like, do I get up there? I flip my hair and I go, Hulk smash. And I rip my shirt off and then I like do one move and then I go, nope, nope, stop. Turn off the music. This is dumb. Burlesque is dumb. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just walked off and then I woke up and I was like, ooh. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's, uh, that's really straightforward. That's very clear. <laughs> Doing one of my favorite numbers. Nope, this is stupid. Turn it off. I'm, this is dumb. Burlesque is dumb. I quit. I quit. <laughs> I think I would die if I actually saw that happen in person. Like, I don't know how I would react. That would be so shocking. <laughs> it's so funny. That is like the most blatant dream ever. You don't have need any dream journal. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> nope, nope, this is dumb. It's over. Shut it down. <laughs> what do you need? You need, a, uh, you need a vacation from burlesque. I only have one show in May, so I will have... I have like six shows in April. and I have like one show in May, so in May I will decompress. That's a great idea. Yes. Good for you. All right. Where strippers. Can you... Yeah. <laughs> Fancy strippers. Oh, yeah. We haven't done this. Where can you find us on the internet? I'm at Sal underscore cheeks. I'm at Urgency. You can find us at cagesideseats.com. Email us. We haven't gotten an email in a minute. Send us an email about yeah, something. Send us an email. Uh, at notyourdemo at gmail.com. You can find us on notyourdemographic.tumblr.com. You can. Is that it? I think that might be <laughs> Well, what's uh, your Twitter? You wanna, I said my Twitter already. Oh, I started reading about Drew Galloway. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. That's acceptable, <laughs> I guess. Uh, if you want to talk about the podcast, you can use the hashtag NotYourDemoPod, because we don't have a podcast Twitter, which yeah. several people have pointed out I lately. I you complain about it, but would you rather have two really active, fun, engaging Twitters, or or those, and a Twitter that we never use, and it's just like yeah. weird, and you act not your demo pod and we never get back to you yeah literally never <laughs> think about that my friends think mcfly think mcfly demis yeah <laughs> <laughs>
control the volume. <laughs> I know. Reel it in. Reel it in. Reel it in. Reel it in. You're listening to Love Advice with Leanne. Caller, you're on the air. Uh, hi, Leanne. Long-time listener, first-time caller. <laughs> Why, in your professional opinion, do you never take my calls off the air? Is this Carl? Yep, it's Carl. I mean, we had a few dates. Everything was great. I thought... Uh... Well, you know, when you switch to GEICO, you could save a lot of money on car insurance. Okay, awesome. You should call them. I will. GEICO, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. George's Bank scallops are now at Bonefish Grill. The George's Bank off the coast of New England is known for its amazing sea scallops, and Bonefish prepares them just right. Grilled to perfection over a wood fire and served atop creamy Parmesan risotto. And start the night off with our new handcrafted happy hour every day from 4 to 6.30. Enjoy signature cocktails like our tropical tiki martini for just $5. And new bar bites like ahi tuna poke are just $6. So come in tonight and discover what's new at Bonefish Grill.